Hello my soccer universe, I have decided to split Austria and Germany for this week because we were in a game and second there were actually quite some things in Germany and I think this would have made the video way too long, a lot of white in the background but we have actually quite a few things to talk about. A. We have to talk about the situation in the Austrian Bundesliga who on top and bottom it is getting really really tight and really really dicey in, in, in a way. Uh, we have to talk about uh, the last game where the family was at the stadium. It was a successful event. I also hear a little preview. I will also reveal a new jersey that I got at that game. So um, make it kind of an unpacking plus a, a review video. And then uh, last we have to talk about the Austrian Cup final, which also ended quite well, uh, especially not only for the team that won, but also for Lusk, it actually had a positive side effect. But I want to actually start with the news that, uh, you know, we had the licensing uh, licenses given out for the next season where Austria Vienna at the first go around did not get it. They made an appeal and in the second one, they managed to secure financing of the new season and so Austria Vienna will also be playing in uh, the Bundesliga next season which to be honest they do belong there I mean uh, uh, Bundesliga without Austria Vienna doesn't seem quite worth it uh, the question is if there again will be a points deduction or not for them and uh, on the back of that news they then and we have to talk midweek games because two games had to be pulled in front uh, to make because Sturm and Rapid were playing the cup final which is always around the 1st of May this time 1st of May is a Monday so they made it on the Sunday before and we had two really exciting uh, Wednesday games the Sturm Graz Austria Austri Vienna game also Austria Vienna is probably the most underperforming team in terms of results not in terms of their performance i think they usually play very well but they cannot get, get it done they always have an error in in, in them where the teams that are better are just getting past them and this um i think does not bode well for the short term but i think for the long term this austria vienna team is one that i am a little bit wary at sturm graz they took an early lead through tobakovic uh, after which an Austria Vienna fan uh, who was celebrating on the fence fell over and into the ditch that's right there, which was kind of a little bit of a mood killer uh, there. And then um, Sturm got an equalizer through Zakaria in Ronaldinho style. And I thought those free kicks don't happen anymore where uh, the wall is jumping and he pulled it under the wall into the internet. There was no one lying there. And this is why you put players there. Uh, but uh, Tobago, which with, with, with the penalty gave Austria Vienna the lead again, and Austria Vienna actually, actually were deserving for the, uh, that lead. Um, Sturm definitely a little bit more with the heads already at the cup final. However, within two minutes, they turned the whole thing around through Kitishvili and Sakaria after the half. Uh, Tobago, which had a, a big sitter missing that could have earned Austria Vienna a uh, deserved 3-3 which did not happen. I personally would have liked that draw because that would have meant that Lask could get closer with a win to Austria Vienna. And then in the evening, actually a uh, rather positive performance by Rapid, uh, despite going down in the 15th minute to a brilliant Konate goal. I mean, uh, Salzburg at the moment is not performing at the high, highest level and there's a lot of um, talk about uh, the players that want to leave already or that they are in the heads in the transfer market uh, so and they think they can cruise to the league uh, they had this great showing against Sturm Graz on the past we we weekend but uh, Rapid came, came out really pressing and um, giving, giving some trouble and then with the count counter quality from an absolute impossible angle yanks it in but it really has, has, as we say, the Rapid fought back, uh, buoyed by the uh, crowd, of course. Uh, they get an equalizer through Burgstaller, which was very well deserved, even had a goal disallowed for offside. The second half um, was maybe a teeny bit, bit more even, but I really thought that uh, Rapid would, would have been good for, for, for that win. Again, I don't mind that draw, because again, this means more distance between Lusk and Rapid, which is important. What was also important is that Solbar got a straight red card, which meant he could not play in the cup final which uh, was a little bit hurting for them. Uh, then, before 
we get to uh, yes, I will really do a crawl chronology. We had uh, some interesting results in the relegation round, which are up um, on the uh, screen. Uh, Wolfsburg winning at Altach already on Friday evening, uh, meaning that Altach um, were in danger of being caught by Reed, who played an absolutely crazy 4-4 against Austria Lustenau. Lustenau had a 3-1 lead at the half, being absolutely 100% super efficient. Friederike scoring two, Diaby getting another one, uh, it was, uh, and assisted by Friederike. But uh, the result was not indicative of, of how the game went because it was Reed controlling most of, of, of the game and Lucena more or less um, being clinical. Reed get one back just after the half. It is uh, a 2-3 and then uh, Tenemis Little Lung makes it 3-3. Really deserved, and then they had all the upper held and a Mark Ongel and 74th minute give Reed a win that they would have so desperately needed because that would have given them a short shot in the arm to maybe get back in the relegation fight. And it really looked look at Reed is uh, is uh, seeing seeing things out because there was nothing coming from Lustner until the 92nd minute when uh, Jakua makes it 4 4. An absolute mad game, uh, and you know kind of putting uh, putting everything on its head because Austria Lusen is at the moment the form team in the uh, lower half and Reed are the team that is, strug is struggling but Reed was very well for that win. Which brings us now to Lask against Klagenfurt. Again, since we have season tickets, we went there, uh, had a good time. It was a sunny weather. It was a really, it was the first time. I, I, I mean, I had a jacket with me, which was good then when we went, went home. But the way we are seated, we are so much in the sun. The entire game, even when the entire pitch is uh, already in the shade, as it was in Tour Tours anyway, we are still very much in the sun. I may have even gotten some, some tan. It was good that I had a cap, because otherwise it would have been really, really hard to follow. Um, because it's a long weekend, because it's uh, 1st of May uh, tomorrow, so it's an extended weekend, and, uh, and the opponent Klagenfurt is probably not the one that you wanna, uh, is, it brings the most spectators. It was for the first time a little bit an underwhelming um, crowd. I mean, it was uh, slightly over 10,000, which is still really, really good. And this is what I always say, Lusk in a reg, uh, even in normal season, Lusk is drawing around 10,000 if they're if they have having a good gold season against every opponent what was the positive for me is that for uh, for us is a that we didn't have i mean it's always nice to have a full away se section uh, although i like sturm graz fans more because they are more respectful rapid fans completely destroyed the facilities there where sturm graz fans nothing had to be done there uh, but you know they're also very noisy. So uh, since since we are sitting right next to, to them, we don't really hear what the Lask fans are chanting all that well, just because of this of, of distance. But now you could see even when we're ahead, they're making quite some noise, and the new stadium has quite the atmosphere. Uh, it's very well constructed in that sense. Um, what else can I say? Yes, ahead of it, maybe let's do uh, that. Ahead of the, of the game, I have been longing for this. I went to the fan store and I said, I want to buy a jersey uh, right, right there, which is nicely packaged. And I want to reveal that now because uh, it's a very, very, very special one. Open it up for you. The lady says that they are rather tightly cut. So um, I went for a size larger. You see the nice packaging and let's open it up. It's finally, I have the retro jersey from the late 60s. Uh, it's really, really nicely done. Uh, this time it's a Lusk fabrication, not, uh, they had it in, uh, with one of the original, of the retro jersey makers, but then uh, decided they, uh, because they can do it themselves. It's a very, very interesting design. I have to say it's a, a rather odd one, but I really like the Lusk on one side and then the black and white stripes uh, it's pretty cool and it has been a fan favorite all around. Of course, same design going to the back. Fans have been longing for this one. Me too. And I'm very pleased that I finally have this jersey. So, 
family, of course, enjoying the game as well. Um, you know, my kids always fighting who sits where. Uh, this time I had the little one next to me. Um, but very quickly, you know, sun come in, mean, you take it. Uh, you, <laughs> we were sitting short sleeve there. Even put the scarves from our necks onto our wrists. Uh, I have to say the game itself, the first half was kind of, um, yeah, I mean, it was exactly the game that I, in a way, did expect that uh, Klagenfurt will see City even Lask have to break them down. Lask were playing towards the fan sex section, so away from, from, from us, and more, more or less, first half was really a doozy because of that, because there was hardly any action happening at our, on our side. Uh, and even my uh, older daughter then said, well, I really think this game will, uh, will end in a nil-nil or it will be an, uh, a, a draw or something. I said, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, there were a few chances there, but um, not much happening over overall. How it all happened then in the second half, uh, right in front of our goal, when a corner kick from Michal hits the head of the Tiras and it goes in 52nd minute. And uh, Michal corner... And the defender heading in, this used to be a staple of Lusk's uh, la latest Clio is about two, uh, three, two years ago. This was uh, Thiers Antrana, who is now playing for Feyenoord. Um, that was the goal that the game needed uh, to make it a little bit more in interesting. And it actually even meant that um, Klangfurt got, got, got us brought on three players and had then a glorious chance in the 64th minute where uh, reserve goalkeeper Laval was saving quite well um, because that should probably should, should, should have gone in and would have been 1-1 one, one and again uh, why, why we have it and right into this phase where Klangfurt was pressing and thought they can get, get, get an e e equalizer Coach Kuba brings a Mustafa and Flecka, and that changed uh, the complexion of the game. Horvath come, comes in, makes a cross. Schul, 71st minute. Head, heads it in 2 0. Thank you, that was the game. But this was not the end, the end of the game because Laskin actually started attacking. Klangfurt completely a little bit fell to pieces. Schul adding a second one in the, seven, uh, in the 77th. And then Florian Flecka, who has been. One of those players where he is so close to start, but every time he comes out, he gives an additional boost. Um, and he's assisted by Goinger, who also came back in the 86th minute to round the keeper and pull it into the empty net. I was really, really happy for those two, because Goinger coming back from injury and Florian Flecker, because he has been really amazing. And he, I think he might actually be starting the next game the way he has been. But overall, uh, at the halftime, there were some whistles, but overall, uh, really good performance. And as you will see, it's also very, very good for, for a table, but spirits were high. Uh, we went home and, you know, it's a big smile. It's always great to be out with the, fam the, the family. The kids really enjoyed it. We were, uh, you know, there are all the chants that are going on uh, where the fans then say the, uh, the current score and so on. It's really cool. And the, the song, it's, I enjoy it being out with my family and watching Lusk games. That's that's definitely a plus. And uh, we, we even said, yeah, we're gonna continue doing that and I hope we will. So um, here's to that. Let's look at the table before we talk about the cup final because it's really, really good. Uh, we have not Lusk um, and you see already it as orange. So uh, Lusk at the moment is at, the, uh, is at a Europa League qualification spot, which actually means that you have conference league. Um, uh, group stage at least guaranteed if you don't make any Europa League group stage. Um, three points behind Sturm, who are three points behind Salzburg. So we have three teams within six and we have five, um, five games to go. I don't think that Lask will get into the championship fight because, you know, uh, it is a distance out. But, uh, you know, win against, win the next round, uh, then you play Salzburg at home. It is not impossible, but I don't see it happening. It would already be a great season if you finish in second. Uh, what's more important for me is the distance to fourth uh, place is already at nine points. Austria Vienna two points behind Ra Rapid. I think it's between those two who will go directly into uh, qual the qualification, who will play the playoff against the winner of the playoff in the lower round, which is at the moment Austria Lustenau uh, hosting Wolfsburg. On the bottom, it also got tight. It's not a point between Alltag and Reed. It's kind of a toss-up, and Hartberg is not out in the clear 
as well. It's really, 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 really tight. Uh, expected standings, not much has changed, but you know, it's pretty clear that we have a top three and we have a ball and then we have kind of the bottom three in the upper round and even on top it's also that uh, a top three and a bottom three although uh, with the three points it can change all rather quickly okay uh, i give you here uh the upcoming rounds as well and then we'll talk about the cup final Rapid against Sturm, the two biggest fan groups in Austria at the moment, playing for a cup final in Klagenfurt on a sunny day. And Klagenfurt is known as like this whole area of uh, South Southern Austria is very much a holiday destination. It just seemed perfect. It was also perfect. It was a car free day in South in Klagenfurt. Um, stadium full. Both sections, I mean, this was sold out in no time. And what will remain of that final for me is that it was a pyro show, especially from the Raura P fans, but also from the Sturm fans. Uh, first half, maybe no, not much, but the second half, I mean, most of the time it looked like it's a, we were playing in fall because it was so foggy, because both sections started off like New Year's fireworks, left and right. Um, it was really, really crazy. I mean, uh, and I'm not taking only flares, it was literally uh, fireworks going uh, from each section with explosions, everything nice. I have not seen something like that in Austria for a long, long time, if ever. It was all very well choreographed, uh, but it did not make for a great watching spectacle. Uh, spect um, for the game itself, uh, the first half was rather even. Uh, Rapid could actually keep Sturm a little bit at bay. Uh, did it actually quite well. However, second half was all Sturm. Um, they should have taken the 46 minutes. Sakaria misses a wide open op net. He misses even a six second chance. However, he's actually the big hero scoring finally. I mean, Omega should have rounded the keeper before that. Omega in the 67th um, plays it to Sakaria, who then makes it uh, 1 0 uh, and then laid on Sakaria, who actually played for Austria Vienna before, uh, 2 0 and seals the deal. Uh, a game that should have at the time be way out of sight uh, for, uh, of Rapid Vienna, but it is a 2-0, a very well-deserved cup win. What's uh, a little bit sad is that then the Rapid fans really went crazy, uh, tried to delay the game as much by throwing uh, smoke bomb bombs down. I mean, uh, the Sturm goalie was in front of their section. There was one where they put right in, in the goal. You could see everything but the goal, which went up in kind of reddish smoke. But yeah, congratulations to Sturm Graz, and that's also the reason that now third place in the Austrian Bundesliga will go in the Europa League qualification if Sturm finishes in the top two, uh, which is likely, otherwise they go into third, third place in the also Europa League qual qualification. So I don't think a Sturm Graz will go below the top three. That was it for me. From the Austrian Bundesliga, uh, as I said, it was a f it was fun uh, round o overall. I'm really positive about Lask. It's not usual that Lask is having such a, a good second half of the season. Uh, it's very uh, atypical, but at the moment, I want to say they might even be the best team uh, in the uh, top round. But you know, still five games to play, and you have only two home games. Um, so yeah. We'll see, and there are two tough road trips to uh, Sturm and Rapid in there as well. Any case, please let, let me know uh, what you thought about the video and how you like the new shirt. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!